Welcome to the Salt and Light Hour Part 2. I'm Deacon Pedro. Last week, the Vatican announced that Canadian bishops have invited Pope Francis to make an apostolic visit to Canada and that the Holy Father has indicated his willingness to visit our country. This invitation is in the context of the long-standing pastoral process of reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. It would also come following a delegation of Indigenous peoples that will travel to Rome this December to meet with the Holy Father, where he will listen to them, address the impact of the role of the church in the residential school system, and respond to their suffering and the ongoing effects of intergenerational trauma. At the same time, this visit will help determine the focus that the Pope's future trip to Canada should have. Now, there isn't much we know about the Pope's visit, but to tell us more about the December delegation and about how we got here, I'm now joined by the most reverend Richard Smith. He's the Archbishop of Edmonton. Archbishop Smith, uh, welcome. It's good to see you. Good to see yourself. Good to be with you, Deacon Pedro. Thanks. Yes, thank you. So is the Pope coming to Canada? He has certainly expressed his willingness and his desire to do so. So um, as you mentioned in your introduction, when that might be, how it might take place is yet to be determined. Mm-hmm. But it's pretty exciting to hear that the Pope has uh, gone on record as saying he's he's heard the invitation of the bishops. He's well aware of the longstanding desire of the Indigenous peoples that he come to Canada. And to hear him say that he's now willing to come and wants to work that all out is very exciting. It is. And I'm, and I'm sure that it, and all the bishops are now very busy trying to figure out how to put this trip together. Mm-hmm. Um so how, maybe a little background, how does that work to, for, for the Holy Father to visit a country? I guess the Conference of Bishops has to make a formal invitation. Can you tell us a little bit about how that yeah, went that, about? That's right. So at the last plenary, which was in uh, September, the bishops all agreed unanimously that now would be a good time to, you see, to issue the invitation to the Holy Father. There needs to be one also from the, from the government of the country also, which okay. was issued uh, well, a couple of years back now. I believe already. Okay. But the Pope does wait to hear from uh, his bishops in any particular country. So following uh, our plenary meeting, the new president of the conference, Bishop Raymond Poisson, together with the past president, went to Rome for the opening of the synodal process. And while they were there, they took advantage of the time and met with the Cardinal Secretary of State and conveyed through him to the Pope the desire of the bishops of Canada that the Holy Father come to us. So that's how it was issued. Right. Um, so that was a very, very recent request, and, and the Holy Father responded fairly very quickly. quickly. Very quickly. It's yeah, a little, we were encouraged by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a little different than, than the planning of the delegation that's going to visit Rome in December, because my understanding is that that was maybe two or more years in the making. Tell us about how that idea of taking a group of Indigenous people to visit the Holy Father, how that came about. Sure, well, there's a, a little bit to that. So I'd say it's about oh, three years ago now. Anyway, the Conference of Bishops established a small working group of bishops, of which I am one, so there's uh, four of us, to look at the overall question of how the church can uh, walk together with Indigenous peoples here in the country of Canada, uh, further our relationships, bring about healing, reconciliation, and so on. And as we pondered this, we reached out to the various national indigenous organizations. So the organization that deals with the First Nations themselves, Mm -hmm. the Assembly of First Nations, the organization that deals with the Métis here in Canada, the National Métis Council, as well as the organization for the Inuit peoples, and spoke with their leadership uh, to talk about how we move the relationship forward. And as this conversation unfolded, it became clear to us that there needed to be some way in order meaningfully to engage with the Holy Father. Right. For our First Nation peoples, he's the chief, right? He's the, he's the head of the church. And so they do want to engage with him. They want to hear from him. Now, the Pope has known all along of the desire that he come to Canada at some point in history, but he had said to the bishops oh, a while ago, and this, this is very much in accord with his mindset around synodality that he's now applying to the whole church, mm-hmm. He said, you're the, local, you're the local shepherds, work with the peoples, forge a path forward for healing and reconciliation, and at an opportune time, give me an idea of when I might be of assistance, whether that's what I might say, coming to Canada for a visit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a little open-ended, obviously, so we thought that it would be important to, to move in a way that could 
help that engagement with the Holy Father happen as soon as possible. And from mm -hmm. that desire arose this idea of a delegation of Indigenous peoples that would be representative of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit here in our country. Right. Um, and, and so the Holy Father, from the outset, together with the Secretary of State, has been very, very receptive to this idea, very supportive of the approach, very much a synodal listening approach as we move forward. And uh, it's been a long while coming, but now we're, we, and we, we had hoped, in fact, to have the delegation meet with the Pope long before now, but COVID would, got away. I, I was going to ask you, had, yeah. had that pandemic not happened, would, would the delegation have been lost? We've had year? dates set a couple of times. Now, finally, yeah. we're coming to this point in December where we'll meet. The yeah, Pope. it must be, it must be the right time. Um, also, at the, at the plenary, when the bishops met in September, uh, you issued an unequivocal apology to the Indigenous peoples of Canada. I think a lot of people were wondering why that apology didn't take place years ago. Yeah, well, maybe it's helpful to put that in some context. Yes. It's not the first time there's ever been an apology issued by church entities or by bishops. We've been doing that many times over many years, going back to, as far back as 1991 when the Oblates, who had operated most of the residential schools, issued a very heartfelt, deep apology, and then many religious communities after that, and bishops across the country. I've, I've done it a few times. Mm -hmm. I've issued apologies. But what we realized over the last couple of months, especially in the wake of the news that came out of the Kamloops Residential School site about unmarked graves and so on, and all the attention that was focused again in a really, really intense way on this issue, it became clear that many people weren't aware of these past apologies. And there was this idea floating, inaccurate, but it was out there floating around, that the church had yet to apologize here in Canada. So we had our opportunity at the plenary um, to make very, very clear once and for all the deep remorse that we feel. And we put that into words, as you say, of unequivocal apology. Mm -hmm. Not the first time it's happened, obviously, but the timing and the circumstances were such that we felt, okay, we need to speak strongly and collectively now to make it really clear to everybody uh, where we stand on this. You said earlier that for, for Indigenous peoples, the Holy Father is the chief. And mm -hmm. so it makes sense that he would, he would address them. So, so do you think that, I mean, you said that Pope Francis understands that. Do you think that given that, that he would make an apology? Oh, I, I think he's certainly open to say whatever needs to be said that's going to work with the people and bring them healing. Um, obviously, no one knows what the Pope will say until he says it. Yes. I, I do expect that he's going to be uh, very open and receptive to this possibility. And, and in the course of the delegation, he's going to have three distinct meetings, each for right. an hour, uh, with the First Nations, Inuit, Métis, respectively. They're going to speak to him heart to heart. Mm -hmm. And we just know the deeply compassionate heart of our Holy Father. And he will respond as he feels he needs to in the moment, you know, as he's hearing these stories. And then following the three distinctive meetings, there's going to be one collective gathering, which the right. Pope will speak to all of them together. So we're all anticipating very, very much his words, because they're going to mean a great deal uh, to the First Nations, to the Indigenous peoples, as well as to the people of Canada. And the people, yeah, absolutely. And we are going to be hearing a lot about this as in the next couple of months, um, and maybe speaking with you again. Thank you, Archbishop Smith, for, for helping us understand everything a little better today. You're most welcome. Archbishop Richard Smith is the Archbishop of Edmonton. You can read all about the Indigenous pastoral initiatives of our Canadian bishops, the work that has been done, including past encounters with popes and several of the apologies that Archbishop Smith mentioned at the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops website, cccb.ca. And if you missed any part of this conversation or to listen to it again, you can visit us at eselmedia.org.